In this video we learn about cumulative frequency diagrams, and more particularly we learn how to find the median, the lower and upper quartiles, as well as the interquartile range using a cumulative frequency diagram. Now the first thing we'll do is learn how to find the median value. We can see here we have a cumulative frequency diagram, and this is following up on what you, we've previously seen, which was we had a class of 30 students, all of which were asked to measure their own heights and summarize this information in this cumulative frequency diagram. Now, when working with such diagrams, the first thing we should always do is make a note of the total number of values or outcomes that we have, and we call that value n. So in this case, there were 30 students, so n is equal to 30. To find the median value, the key rule to remember is that the median value corresponds to a cumulative frequency of 50% of the total number of outcomes, n. That's quite simply 0.5n. Now in this case, n is equal to 30, so 50% of that is 15. So we can already label on the vertical axis of our graph the number 15. Now to find the median value, we draw a horizontal line from that vertical axis, axis sorry, up to the curve as shown here. And then we draw a vertical line from the curve down to the horizontal axis. And the median value is the value we would read off the horizontal axis. Now, don't worry too much about accuracy here. This is an estimate. Looking at this, it seems as though the median value is somewhere between 173 and 174. We'll just write it's approximately 174. So we'll go ahead and say that the median value is 174 centimeters. Now, what this means is that in this class of 30 students, half of them, or 50% of them, measure less than one, 174 centimeters. It also means, of course, that the other half measure more than 174 centimeters. So it's splitting the class into two equal sections or two equal parts, the lower part measuring less than 174 centimeters and the upper part measuring more. To find the lower quartile, the starting point is the same. We remember that the total number of values we had was n equals to 30. And the key thing to remember for the lower quartile is that it corresponds to a cumulative frequency of 25% of n. And that's equal to 0.25 times n. So in this case, since n equals to 30, 0.25 times 30 is 7.5. And we can label that on our graph just as we did previously. And the method now is the same. We draw a horizontal line leaving the cumulative frequency axis, so that's the vertical axis, up to the curve. And now from that point on the curve, we draw a vertical line to read off the height. Now looking at this, we can see that that is approximately 167. And so we go ahead and write the lower quartile, which we typically refer to as Q1, as in first quarter, is equal to 167 centimeters. Now what this value tells us is that 25% of our students measure less than 167 centimeters. That also means, of course, that 75% of our students measure more or are taller than 167 centimeters. To find the upper quartile, the starting point is still the same. We make a note of the total number of values we have. So in this case, we had 30 students, so n is equal to 30. And the key thing to make a note of is the fact that the upper quartile corresponds to a cumulative frequency of 75% of our total. So that's 75% of n, which is 0.75n. And now in our case, since n was equal to 30, that would be 0.75 times 30, which is 22.5. And we can add that to our graph there. Now, once more, we draw a horizontal line leaving the cumulative frequency axis up to the curve, like shown. Now, from that point on the curve, or on the diagram, we draw a vertical line down to the horizontal axis to read off the value. Now, looking at this, we can see that's approximately 179. And so we can now state that the upper quartile, which we typically write Q3, as in third quarter, is equal to 179 centimeters. Now what this means is that 75%, 
three quarters of our students measured less than 179 centimeters. It also means, of course, that one quarter or 25% of our students measured more than that value, so were taller than 179 centimeters. We move on to the last and final step, which is learning how to find the interquartile range. To find the interquartile range, which we commonly simply call IQR, our starting point is to make a note of our lower and upper quartiles. So remember, we had found that the lower quartile Q1 was 167 centimeters, and that was here on the graph. We had also found that our upper quartile Q3 was 179 centimeters, which is here on the graph. Now the interquartile range is a measure of dispersion. It tells us how far apart the lower quartile and the upper quartile are. In other words, it tells us where the middle 50% of our values lie, or not so much where, it tells me how far apart they are from each other. And so the formula for the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. That's the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. And in this case, that's 179 minus 167, and that's 12. And the units are, of course, centimeters, so that's 12 centimeters. So again, what the interquartile range tells us is how far apart the lower quartile is from the upper quartile. And this gives us a measure of dispersion, how dispersed the values are. And there we have it. That sums up how we can use cumulative frequency diagrams for finding the median, the lower and upper quartiles, and the interquartile range. I hope that helps.